Good morning, everyone. How are you? I just went, oh, I didn't put the clubhouse light on. So John's going to come in and turn it on. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let's just swing this around. Oh, dirty room, dirty room. Can you see it, John? There it is. There we go. <laughs> it's our good luck. <laughs> oh, you guys, I can't begin to tell you how wonderful it was to get away and feel normal again. It was just, it was like I could forget about all this stuff and it was absolutely fabulous. So, to, you know, it's interesting because I have a class that I used to teach in person like at a Silomar, a five-day workshop called uh, uh, Stars or Simply Stars. I had a book on it too. And there were a lot of PC minutias that went on in that book, different, like when weirdo shapes don't line up, which of course is, hey Margo, which of course is what we're covering right now on these blocks and, and magic numbers and blah, blah, blah. So there was a lot of technical stuff in that book, but what the class ended up being was about color. And in a sense, I think that's kind of happening here. And it's, it's, I'm learning a lot along with you guys. In fact, I'm going to share something today that I even called Barbara Black a few minutes ago. And I said, is this true? And she said, yes, it is. So I want to take, um, and let me just say, I love, hi, Rondi, that people are here from all over the world. The other thing is on Monday, it was pre-recorded, the part where uh, the teaching was going on. And I will tell you, I didn't realize that I was in a little video box on camera. <laughs> so yes, I was uh, drinking my trough right here. Alethea gave me this, thank you, Alethea, with my iced tea. I hope I wasn't scratching anything <laughs> weird. But what I liked about it, and I may, I, I, I don't know, I'm not going to say when I'm going to do it when I'm not, but... What I liked about it was that I could look at your questions and that's exactly what I was doing. Like I could say, Lane is here from France or someone would say, well, what about X, Y, Z? And so I was madly making notes. So I didn't have my pretty smile on. I'm just making my notes and oh, answer that, answer that, answer that. So this may be a direction I go, but I'm not committing one way or another. So here we go. All right. Um, let's look at some quilts. That always makes me happy. Uh, this, I got a couple more sequoias. Remember, you guys, you can post this stuff in the forum now. We have, even if it's under the CAFE one, go post it so everyone can see, all right? Uh, so let's take a look at, I don't really know, it's, it's called, her screen name is Hogan Camp. So I wonder if that's like a Camp Bubby or something like that. Now, what I think is so interesting here, and I don't think I would have ever considered it, and I adore it, is where the two verticals and the center, there's nothing on it. And guess what? Her quilting shows like there's no tomorrow. So I would not have thought of that option. And I think that's fabulous. I don't think she's going to go back uh, and reapplicate, but... The way those, I don't know if they're hand dyes or what the heck is going on, but wow, that was a true surprise for me. True surprise. So the other thing I'm just looking at right now too, if you go below the big block of color, below the blue, there's a green and then there's a pinwheel on point, all right? Those read very dark. Then you go above that, look, I'm pointing on, you know, I'm thinking you could see, but then you go up here and this is very dark and then this is, and then this is kind of, I love, love, love how your eye is being forced to move all around the quilt. So uh, yay for that. Now we got to get the binding on. Mine is still sitting with the binding sewn on, but not hand whipped down. Ugh, I hate binding. And I know there are those of you who love it like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> this one had a whole lot of story behind it. And this is by uh, Paula. And, and look, you guys, this has been hard on everybody. We've all had our moments, okay? But this was very symbolic, what um, Paula did. For instance, the spools to the left of the house made her it's that's how she's kept her sanity 
and there's a lot of secret messages in there. Now, I want to say, look at the different blocks she did. She didn't hold to the structure of the Sequoia pattern, and I adore that, okay? Adore that. I love the hearts in it because it ha we have to get through this with hearts that, that are true and good. And then I love the home where it says shelter at home and then the way those two fronds come off the top. So I think that's a really lovely note to how we can remember these Sequoia quilts. Uh, I made two, it was fun, got my head out, you know. So okay, back to the forum, here we go. We got the mystery quilt. You go to the forum, go to recent topics, and look at everything that has been posted. And actually, it's way more than this right now. But if you post, if you post something, what is going to happen is you will start getting all the posts, okay? And everybody is so active, you're going to go, wah! What you can do is go and unsubscribe, and then you can get back into the forum and you won't be getting all these emails unless you post again, but then you can go and unsubscribe. That's how you do it, right, John? I put a link to the forum. And you did? I put a link to the forum. Where? In the chat. Oh, John just said he put a link to the forum in the chat, so that's fantastic. So, it, talk about going to the forum. I went, th I, ha I had to unsubscribe because I was just like, oh my gosh, with all my other stuff, but that doesn't keep me from going in there. And I love to see what you're doing. So let's take a look, see, and I'm telling you guys, if you don't go in the forum, you are missing the boat. So this is Diane's and Diane mentioned that she thought it was, she needed more value change. I think you said that Diane, if I didn't, please forgive me. I don't think so. I think what you have going on there is smashing. Basically, you're doing grays, blacks, purples, but what's saving it and what's making it pop are the whites. Um, even though, say, this one is dark, okay, and this one is dark, I don't care because I'm, I'm going through these flash of lights here. I, I don't know, Diane, keep going. Don't, don't question yourself at this point, you guys, and that's a really hard thing. Don't, just don't do that yet. Okay, this is Dorel's. And Dorel, you're doing your own thing. Congratulations. I love that you're pulling from your stash. I love, love, love that. So yay. And I don't know, are those things boutiques? I've got my nose up on it. No, I don't think so. I don't know. But you guys, you do not have to use the fabric that we are um, selling to, and I've got news about that, uh, to do this. Okay, Lindy, these are analogous, which mean they just like play right next door on the color wheel. And I want to say something about that. Uh, she put in her email that she's not a big yellow person, but she needs to throw yellow in. I'm going to give you a lecture that I got in college. So look at this. Okay, come back here. Probably one of the best classes I took in college was crochet, believe it or not. Uh, I think I've spoken about Marika Contempasis, and I might have I might have shared the story before, but it bears to be repeated. So Marika could take a bag of yarn, like the ugliest looking thing you've ever seen, mishmash of colors, pull it out, and oh hey Roberta, um, pull it out and crochet magic. Okay, and this was really mind blowing to me. Just <sighs> so in this class, I decided I needed to be the one to tell people about the good colors and the bad colors of the world. Yeah, it was my job. And at that point, I really struggled with autumn colors, really struggled with the browns, the yellows, the oranges, excuse me, and even maybe a little bit of green or something. And so I decided to tell people about the good colors and the bad colors of the world, okay? And we're talking fabric. And she pointed, she's a very slight in frame. She pointed her finger at me and said, to say you hate a color tells me you're ignorant of its use. Ouch. Ouch. So what I'm gonna say to you, Lindy, and to all of you is, Lindy's already identified that yellow is not her jam, okay? Right now, I want you to think of the color that just 
grosses you out. Okay, your next block has to have that in it. The more you understand the color, the more it will just broaden your vocabulary in working with different colors, okay? So here we go, another run, Rowen. That was, my mom said it's like saying you hate a key on the piano. It's like, okay, but who's it playing with, right? Okay, I think, is it Rowen? Rowen, she has just given away the mystery right here, okay? I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. I, I adore how you have used the fabric to pull the colors that you're working with, but chances are what I'm gonna try and do is in the off, offset squares are put quarter square triangles or half square triangles of the caves. Look how exquisite this is. It is beyond, okay? And so when I saw this, I just had to smile because that is exactly the direction that I'm going, exactly. And I wanna talk about one other thing too is you are going to have some Uggs, people. You just are, okay? Like, I think I shared this before, but I'll share it again. This one here, bleh, I don't like it at all. And it was the second block I made, so it was rather startling, to tell you the truth. And so, and that's when I kind of decided I wanted to put white in most of my blocks. You could see here, there's no white. It's okay. This is blah. This is okay. So I am gonna work this in. It, it will work in, I trust me, it just will. It's just that if it's the second block you've made, you're just gonna go bleh, you know, but stand by. Oh, while I'm up, let me talk about one other thing. Okay. Now that we're getting a lot of blocks, these were earlier blocks that I made early on and this was a bear, because it's all these little pieces. But not only that, I put it up here. Well, actually, now it looks pretty good. Oh, maybe it will end up in it. Huh, I felt that it was too fussy compared to the other blocks, but you know what? I may make you suffer through this block. But this one I made, and it was like, it's just, it's too chunky, but maybe not. Maybe it works. So I think I'm changing my mind about these things. What do you guys think? Is it working in? I don't know. I don't know, but I didn't. it didn't take that long to make this, so it can come or go, I don't care. This one is going because someone said it looked like a swastika. Right there, so I, they're spools. I love spools, but it was kind of a bear too, so you can be grateful that this one's being um, Bye bye. But here's the thing any of the blocks in there, what do we think about that pinwheel on top? Seriously, I don't, is it too chunky? I don't know. Hmm. Well, that's why I have a design wall, okay? Because that's how you do it. So let's talk about what we're going to be doing today. And we'll start with color. And we are going to be doing the single wedding ring, which is right here oh I gotta face it me I like it that the okay, here we go this is what we're gonna do the single uh, this one here the single wedding ring oh we are gonna do uh, the signature friendship too we're gonna do that as a label on the front so what I want you guys to do is please go grab a pencil or a pen because I'm giving you some cheaty cheaty shortcuts on this particular block all right but single wedding ring, number 85, page 97 in the book. What? No, it doesn't matter. You got to trust me on that one. All right. So let's talk color first. This is the one I made first. And I, I really do like this block. I think it's very sweet. And I probably never would have made it before. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Basically, it's complementary across from the color wheel. So that works every single time. Now, the only reason I'm making two of each block is because I had to get ahead of you guys to see um, 
what would work and what wouldn't work so we didn't get into something and have a big mess. You don't have to do two. You can do one. You can do whatever the heck you want. It's your quilt. All right, so I decided to go with, I decided not to use my cape fabric at all, and I decided to go with my split complement, which complement would be straight across, there's your red, but by splitting it, I've got green, um, purple, orange, and yes, I know, my discs, I spell them all wrong. That's how it rolls. So let's take a look at what I've got going. I did start working on this yesterday because it is a very straightforward block. So, oh, here's my book. Okay, got your pens, pen? Let's, t I, gotta, I gotta look at my book. Let's talk about, please, the um, C and D, okay, C and D. For C and D, for a six inch block, it tells you to cut C and D one and a half by two and a half. I know you're looking at your book and you can see that. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can't see it on screen. Well, why don't I just strip piece this whole darn thing, okay? So what I did was I'm gonna need four, so one and a half and one and a half is three. And then it, and then, anyways, wait a minute, two and a half, sorry, okay. Two and a half and two and a half are five, plus another two and a half plus another two and a half is 10. You, you know what I flunk math. So why am I cutting these all separately? Why don't I just take that 10, round it up to 11 and go, 11 by two and a half. Boy, I just see a mistake in my book right here. Thank goodness these friction, I heard they're frictions, not frixion. I've been corrected. 11 by two and a half, okay? And I did that, I did that right here. Get this out of the way. I did this yesterday. Now this is a great little pressing board that was made for me probably 30 years ago. I often will put my wool woolly mat on top. But let's say, what happens sometimes when you're doing a strip and you can see it based on the ticking on this quilt, things kind of bow a little bit. You can see that where it's not straight. I am going to use these tickings to get this straight and press it straight and set the seam. If you do not have a board like this, which I know you don't, because this was made for me specially, there is no reason you can't take your friction pen, pencil, whoop, or pen, and draw a line on your um, ironing surface. It might have to be your ironing board if you're like using the woolly mat, like this, okay? And then I can use this to iron it and whip it into shape. By that I mean, because look you guys, if you're not familiar with this pin, yay, it's gone. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna set the seams just by pressing down. Get my little leg out of the way so I don't get burned. All right, get it nice and straight. I think that's pretty good. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press from the top. And I'm going to press to the green. I can't remember what I did. Look at, hey, when we went up to the cabin, I found another one of these irons that I forgot I had. These weighted irons. Aren't I lucky? I'm going to leave it up there, though, because I do a lot of sewing up there. Not this week. This week, I just relax. Okay, look at this, you guys. See that little tuck there? Well, you can't, but it's there. You absolutely have to be so careful to make sure you're not pressing any little tucks. And if you're on a, um, that can make or break an entire quilt. And I'm serious in telling you that. You know what I realize I'm missing? I'm missing a ruler to trim this with. Oh, there it is right there, I lose that, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this at 11 by two and a half. So, 
Let's see. Oh, wow. This little ruler is two and a half. Isn't that handy? No, it's three and a half. I can hear you screaming, no, it's not. It's three and a half. I never thought I would enjoy these little Quilter Select rulers. I am loving them for this. I think they come in three sizes, like two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, I think. Two, I'm gonna lay this little block out. Okay. Um, I wonder if I can, I'm gonna lay it out down here. One, let's see, dark to the outside. Oh, so cute. Aren't all of these just a little treasure? Completely. Okay, I'm gonna put that in there. All right, yay. If these don't line up, you cut something wrong. So here are the little squares on point, and I called Barbara Black and asked her if I could do this, and she said, yeah, she said, in fact, on Monday, she was wondering why I didn't do it. Okay, so let's look at our book, please. Let's look at these corner squares, all right? And the center square is cut at two inches, all right? And then the outside half square triangles are cut at, where are you? one and seven eighths. So I decided to round up that one and seven eighths to two. You can do it at one and seven eighths, but I'm gonna round it up to two, just one eighth, all right? And then here we go over here. So this is overcut a little bit. And that's okay, see? I mean, I would know just because I'm a trained professional that these are a little too big. So let me get my little glue stick, do this and this. Oh, I forgot to fold it. Uh-oh, I wonder if I, oh, fold it backwards. If I fold it upside down, then this goes upside down. I want those two folds to line up, okay. Stick, and then I'm going to do this side. We are having issues with our cameras here, and John stayed up till two or one in the morning to see if he could solve why we can't get three cameras. And so I, he was so proud of himself this morning. He goes, I got it all set up. I got it all set up. I got your third camera. And I said, honey, I'm not using three cameras today. <laughs> So thank you, John. He's even, he's written to the companies too to find out what the heck is going on. You know how it froze and then at this and then that. Oh, I just love the sound of a good sewing machine. Can you believe this? Everybody's saying that. One and a half by 11? What? They're all saying that that's where it should be. One and a half. Wait, hold on. One. Oh, you guys are right. I did have it right in my book. Thank you. On D and C, it should be one and a half by 11. Oh gosh, thank you. They, I had it at one and a half and then I looked at something else and then, oh, you know, you know who you're dealing with here. So thank you, one and a half by 11 for the long strip. Set the seams, I'm off a little bit. Oh, thank you so much. I was teaching a class once and I had it completely wrong and, and the students didn't say anything and I got all done and I'm like going, well, you people are not my friend, okay? Period, bang, that's it, you're not my friend. Let me make sure I don't have any text in there, I don't. One and a half by 11. Hey, that's what you get when you take a free class. <laughs> you get what you pay for. I'm kidding. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, it's my COVID brain. I, I just have to blame everything on my COVID brain. I just 
still can't get over that a fish bit me in the butt at the lake. I cannot get over that. Especially now when you see all the, <laughs> all the news today. I'm not laughing at it, but it's like all those awful shark attacks on the East Coast. Thank God it was a little man-made or, lake or I would have lost my mind. Okay. And they're doing it right up there. I mean, they are making sure, you know, the beach only has X amount of people. Um, they even have cars um, with cones in between them so you can't park next to somebody. It's probably a way they can monitor the size of the crowd on the beach. Okay. It's Groveland, California. And the facility is Pine Mountain Lake. Okay, here we go. Pretty little thing. Okay, so here we have this. And now I'm going to press it open. <laughs> I keep picking up the, the metal iron. So um, William and Adair and the kids were at the house, okay, up there. They're in our bubble. And William started playing with this this iron. And he also had an ingrown toenail. And I'm like, oh, man, kid, I would not be doing that. You are going to be so sorry if that falls on your toe. And he listened. All right. So we can see here that this is way more than a quarter inch. And that's, well, not way, but a little bit. And that was because I added that eighth of an inch. So what I've done is I've taken this ruler, this is the two and a half, and I've drawn with a uh, Sharpie felt tip pen. I've come in a quarter inch, so I even have more lines than what's on the ruler. And then that's where I want the points to end up. This side's a little bit off, but it'll be fine. So I can see here that the point is here, the point is here, the point is here, the point is here. As we get into smaller pieces, it all becomes just a little bit more, pit, um, what's the word, uh, piddly. So I'm gonna shot turn. Okay, I love how the rulers slide on the mat. Oh, it shifted just a little bit. You know, cutting sitting down is not, your best option. You guys all know that, right? Okay. So, let's like, yeah. Barbara, is it okay if I do that? Yes, it is okay. Thank you, Barbara. Look how good this looks. And Barbara's just doing a bang up job in the forum. Bang up job. Okay, so now basically you're talking about a nine patch, right? And I don't understand why they call some four patches, four going across, but this is nine. I don't get it. The only thing that really has to be lined up is this to this, right? And so I'm going to go grab Cindy's little pin cushion. And, oh, look at that. How embarrassing. That's like holes in your underwear. Did your mom tell you to not wear holy underwear so that if you got in a car accident, the paramedics wouldn't see your holy underwear <laughs> or am I the only one um let's see okay so here's a little issue here going on this is less than a quarter of an inch and that does not make me happy from here to here so I'm going to pretend like there's a quarter inch there I can uh, snoop out a smell out a quarter inch on a good day and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come in here a quarter inch and I'm just gonna let the chips fall a little bit short. And I'm gonna drop the pin in right before, right after, oh wait, up here, what am I doing? Right after, holding it taunt. And then see how this is falling short, like right here and here, that's okay. That's fine. I'm just gonna pretend like there's fabric there. Cause see, this side's coming out perfectly. So yeah, it fell short, big deal. I could glue, I could pin. I happen to be with pins right now. And let me go take a little stitch stitch on that. Oh, I just shoved that under my finger now, the pin. It's not nice. Casualties. You know, one thing I will tell you when I do sew, quilt, whatever, if my fingers are anywhere near the um, 
needle going up and down unless I am hyper paying attention like I am right now, I take my foot away from the gas pedal. Say a little prayer for me. Ta-da! Yay! And so that's how it goes, you guys. Just like that. This is a really sweet block. I will um, finish it up. Do this row. Pin it again. This is a slam dunk. Do these like I just did that, and you are good to go, okay? So, all right. Um, you know, that's the funny thing about sewing. This is, what I, this is what I don't like about not being with you guys is nonsense talk. <laughs> the underwear story, too. Okay, well, given that, how about the Clean Plate Club? How many of you are in that? Mm-hmm. The clean plate club. They never said that kids in China were starving. I would not have bought off on that. But the clean plate club. Ooh, I was a proud member, which probably explains a lot. So let me tell you uh, what's going on. I have some really good news. Let's go to the front page. We, we have secured a couple dozen of the Mystery Quilt Project Bundle. To the point, uh, it's the Barassica with the hand dies to the point that in order to make more kits, we went and bought fabric at full price. So if you're sad that you didn't get it, we've cleared everybody off the wish list. I would take advantage of it. I'm sure it will be gone in a couple hours. I don't know, maybe more than a couple dozen, maybe like 30 or 40, but it's not like we have unlimited amount, okay? So I would get off of this and go get it right down. The other thing is, don't forget, you guys, the stay-at-home special where it's $19.95 for six months. And I mean, that includes all the shows. That includes everything. But then the other really great news is that we, I've been telling you that we have been slammed by official member of the Clean Clay, Clay, Clean Plate Club, Jan, you and I, me too. Okay, so stop, Alex. I just, the squirrel ran by. It was called the clean, clean plate squirrel. So, okay. So I've been telling you how slam brandy is. And it's because all of this has just taken off like there's no tomorrow, of which we are ever so grateful. But that doesn't help you if you're trying to get customer service. All right. So I think the best way is to get hold of brandy is to just do customer service at thequiltshow.com. But you can try and call, but good luck with that. But guess what? We've hired another person. We we heard, we could hear Brandy crying all the way from her house. And we said, yes, we have to get someone. And then we're going like, well, who are we going to get? I mean, this has, person has to be trained, blah, blah, blah. Suzanne is so busy in the store, she can't even see straight. Well, Brandy's sister is going to come work with us, Melissa. And uh, at 11 o'clock, we're going to go over and meet her. We haven't exactly decided how to split up the du duties, but Brand, um, Melissa will be training for a little bit. Kind of what we're thinking is one person might take email and then the other person might take the phones or, or whatever. But I am ever so grateful and I'm really sorry for any inconveniences that you have had. We've also had, can I tell them about what's going on in the store or not? We have a little issue, um, like if people are trying to order off their phones and stuff like that, I would just get to a computer, you guys. John is working with that company. It's not on our site. It's it's our hosting per people for the store. John is going to be working with them today, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Um, in our meeting yesterday, Justin even got into a loop uh, on his phone, a complete loop. Show how to use the rudder. Oh, rotary cutter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... If John could learn to fold, <laughs> so can Melissa. <laughs> hey, and remember, remember the picture I showed back in a couple, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago where we had Brandy's mom folding fabrics too. Oh gosh, we are resourceful. All I want is to make quilters out of them. Okay, it's not closed. Okay, so here's the rotary cutter. It's about eight ounces. It's super weighted. I heard Ricky was having a hard time with it on his show and tell. There's all sorts of little buttons on it. The button you care about is this one right here. It's its lock, okay? It's it's what's keeping this closed. So right here is this button. When I press down on the button, press in, I tap down, I'm open. That's it, I'm open, I'm ready to go. 
when it's time to close, that's it. I'll do it again. And it's left and right handed with no blade change. Open, cut, 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 cut. Close. Okay, so, oh, so here's how you, just ignore this thing back here. Ignore it. I, I hate it. I don't even know why it's there. Well, I'll tell you. No. If you promise me this is how you'll do it, yay, I'll show you what it's for. This is for if you're cutting really like a ton of layers, you can push, you can push that to one side, pull it. Oh, you no, know, you push this first, you pull that blade open. I, I don't like that. I think that's incredibly dangerous. I mean, if I were using this, I might have to be cutting batting or, you know, something like that. Okay. So then on the back, this is super cool to change the blade. You take this area here and you go like that. I just pulled this switch down. You take the blade off. That's it. Put a new blade on. And then there's a flat part on this. There's a disc here. There's a flat part. And there's a flat part here. And you line it up. And you go like that. Okay? So, yes, you guys, please, with this new fabric, please wash those hand dyes. They run. They run. Yeah, so thank you, Roxanne, for saying definitely pre-wash. They are very, very bleedy. They are. And so I would use my uh, Shout Color Catchers and all that good stuff. So I think we're good. I think we're super good. Um, I'm going to... I may try pre-recording again on Friday and see how that works because I really like watching your comments. I really like that a lot. So anyways, you guys, uh, have a great day. We're going to go meet Melissa in about 20 minutes. She's coming out to the Alden Lane so we can meet her. And uh, this journey, we just got to continue it, you guys. We're just continuing on with this journey. And I love it that um, Rowan kind of got where I was going with this. So maybe I might start putting stuff up there. I, you know, the other fabric. I don't know. I don't know. But this is how I work. Welcome to my world. And yes, you will see me look at squirrels that run by my back window. That's how it rolls with Alex Anderson. Have a good one, you guys.